Question six is the biggie. Lots of marks available on this one. So let's have a look at what we've got to do. The algorithm in figure two is a sorting algorithm. So we know immediately that we're dealing with sorting. Array indexing starts at zero. So you can see here we've got an array. It's got the numbers four, one and six. So that means we'll refer to this as position zero. This is position one and this is position two. So that will be R0, R1, R2. Line numbers included, blah, 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 blah. OK, so let's start with the easy stuff. State the data type of the variable sorted in the algorithm. So let's have a look at sorted. Well, sorted takes the value false here. Sorted takes the value true here. It only seems to take the value sort true or false anywhere in the algorithm. So a variable that can only be true or false is a Boolean variable. The identifier sorted is used in the algorithm shown in figure two. Explain this is a, why this is a better choice than using the identifier s. We can call a variable anything we like, but we've called this variable sorted. Now, why would you call it that rather than using the letter S? We've used the letter here, I. Why, if we use I here, can't we use S there? Well, the answer is because sorted tells you what the purpose of the variable is. So you could say something like sorted tells you what the variable is for. That's one mark. We need to explain. So we need to give some reason for this, what its purpose is. So sorted tell you what the variable is for so that the program will be less confusing or easier to understand. So two things to get a mark for there. One for saying what the reason for using sorted is and another mark for giving a bigger explanation. Okay, now we move on to a trace table. Oh no, before we get to the trace table, let's get uh, this multiple choice question out of the way. Shade one lozenge to show which of the following contains the false statement about the algorithm in figure two. So three of these statements, two of them are true, one of them is false. The algorithm uses a named constant. Now a constant is like a variable, but it never changes its value. So there's nowhere in here that we can see anything where there is a, a, a variable type, a, um, an expression which never changes its value. So that looks like that one's false. Let's check the other two are true. The algorithm uses indefinite iteration. Iteration means looping. Indefinite means using a while loop. A while loop because it keeps repeating until something changes. So that we don't know when that's going to finish. A for loop, we do know when it's finished, going to finish because we give it a certain number of changes. But Indefinite iteration is where we use a while loop. Is there a while loop? No, there are two. So we've got two while loops in there. So we've definitely got indefinite iteration. So that's true. The algorithm uses nested iteration. Nested, like Russian dolls, where you put one uh, kind of iteration inside another kind of iteration. And if we look again, we've got a while inside a while. So that's nested iteration. So in that case, the one that's false is the first one. The algorithm uses a named constant. There are no constants in this algorithm. Right, let's move on to the trace table. Now what we've got to do here is we've got to pretend to be the computer. Now it starts us off with things that we do know. As you can see, the array has got 416 in it. 416, and there you can see the indices, 0, 1, and 2 for the array. And we've got sorted set to false, sorted is set to false. 
we have to say what i and what t are as we go along and obviously we have to change these as we continue so let's start at the beginning while sorted equals false we only keep repeating as long as sorted equals false is sorted equals false yes it is in which case sorted becomes true so we change sorted to true if sorted is become true, then i becomes zero. We assign zero to i. While i is less than two. Is i less than two? Yes, it is. In which case, we'll go into here. If the array of i plus one, now what's i at the moment? i is zero. So i plus one, zero plus one, so array 1 is less than array i. Well, we know i is 0. So if array 1 is less than array 0, then... So is array 1 less than array 0? Array 1 is this number, 1. Array 0 is this number, 4. Yes, it is. So we will do what's in the if. So t becomes array i. Now i, remember, is 0. So we're going to put what's in array position 0 into t. What's in array position 0? 4. We're going to put that into t. Then, what's in array position i plus 1? 0 plus 1, 1. So array position 1 is put into array position 0. So we take what's in array position 1, and we put it into array position 0, 1. We then take what's in t, and we put it into array position i plus 1. That's 1, so array position 1, we put into it what's in t. Take t, and we put it into array position 1. Sorted becomes false. We end the if, we increase i by 1. i becomes 1. We end this while, we go back around this while loop. We're still in this while loop. We go back to this one, while i is less than 2. Is i less than 2? i is less than 2. So we go back in again. i is now 1. If array i plus 1, so 1 plus 1 is 2, is array position 2 less than what's in array position 1? Array position 2 is not less than what's in array position 1. 6 is not less than 4. In which case, we don't do any of this if stuff. i becomes i plus 1. i becomes... Two. The, we come to the end while i is now 2 while i is less than 2 i isn't less than 2 anymore because it's now 2 so this while loop has finished we go back to the beginning of this while loop while sorted equals false is sorted equal to false yes it is. So we'll go back into this while loop. Sorted becomes true. We change sorted to true. I becomes zero. I becomes zero. While I is less than two. Is I less than two? Yes, it is. If array position i plus 1 is less than array i. So, at the moment, i is 0. So, i plus 1 is 1. Is array position 1 less than array position 0? Array position 1 is 4. Array position 0 is 1. So, in that case, it's not less than. This one is not less than that. 
in which case we ignore all of this because that's not true i becomes i plus one one we're still inside this while loop here i is one while i is less than two is one less than two yes it is so we go back to here array position i plus one i is now one so one plus one is two is array position two less than array position one array position two is not less than array position one so we ignore all this if stuff i becomes i plus one which is two Go back round the while loop. I is now 2. Is 2 less than 2? No. So now we ignore all the while loop because we only do this if I is less than 2. So we go to this. We go back to the beginning of this while loop. As long as while sorted equals false. Is sorted equals a false? No. It's equal to true. Because it's equal to true, we can now fall out the bottom of this while loop and the program has ended. And we can see now that these values are sorted into order. This has changed. These numbers have changed here. This has changed here. So now you'll get a mark. One, two, three, four, five, six columns. You get a mark for each correct column for this trace table. Fill in the values in the boxes to show how the merge part of this merge sort algorithm operates. The first and last rows have been completed for you. Now remember with a merge sort, what happens is you start off by breaking everything down into individual values, and then you start putting them back together again, but sorted when you put them. So the th 7 and 3 will be sorted to 3 and 7. The 4 and 1 will be sorted to 1 and 4. The 2 and 8 are already correctly sorted. The 5 and 6 are already correctly sorted. We now bring together these. We merge them so that this now will be sorted. 1, 3, 4, 7. These ones are then merged to five, six, eight. And then last of all, those will be merged together to create the list there. You'll get one mark for each correct row and one mark for having the whole thing correct, making three marks altogether. One advantage of the merge sort algorithm compared to the sorting algorithm in um, the previous case, well, we saw, didn't we, that we went round and round and round the loop so many times. This algorithm is much more efficient. So if you just put, wrote more efficient, you'd get the marks. Or if you wrote uh, something like requires less iterations, less loops, that will get you the mark. Either of those will get you the mark. Now, a programmer implementing the algorithm in figure two decided to create it as a subroutine. Line one was removed. So line one, setting what the array is. And the array was made a parameter. In other words, you would send an array into that uh, algorithm rather than setting what the array was at the beginning. Two reasons why you would decide to implement the algorithm as a subroutine. Well, clearly at the moment, this only works for these three numbers. If we could send it any array we liked, then it would become much more useful to us because we could use it for any array. So reason one would be that um, uh, you could use you could use any array of numbers. 
not just 1, 4 and 6. And the second advantage is if you make it into a subroutine, now you can use it as many times as you like within the program. So you can use it any number of times in a program. So if you wanted to do a sort earlier on in the program and another sort later, rather than having to, rather than having to write out all the code over again, you could just call this subroutine that you created earlier.